Hello, everyone. Uh, this is a series of interviews we are doing uh, to highlight a few of the key speakers at uh, the Java E track for Java 1 2014. Uh, my name is Reza Rahman. Uh, I'm, I have the privilege of uh, leading the track this year. Uh, I have with me Greg Wilkins. Uh, we're, I'm actually very, uh, I feel very privileged to have him on. Uh, uh, I'm sure most of you know who Greg is. Uh, he's basically the mastermind behind Jetty. Uh, he's been, uh, you know, besides being on Jetty, you know, he's been a, a solid contributor to the servlet specification for many years. Uh, certainly, in, in the latest version of the servlet specification, and going forward uh, in servlet four as well. Uh, matter of fact, uh, uh, Greg is, I think, one of the only people, perhaps, uh, that's on the HTTP 2.0 specification uh, on the IETF, uh, and probably uh, will be very critical in the success of the. Servlet for specification. So, first of all, uh, th Greg, thank you very much uh, for uh, you know for uh, donating a bit of your time to do this interview. Uh, so, tell us. Oh, absolutely. Uh, uh, so, I guess to start with, uh, tell us a bit about uh, how you're doing. Uh, how are things in the world of Jetty and uh, use Servlet in general? Um, well, it's it's incredible. I mean, Jetty's been going since I think we're coming up to its. 15th birthday, probably soon, and, and I, I kind of thought that, you know, a servlet container and HDB protocol would become commodity uh, a decade ago, <laughs> but there's just continues to be innovations in the way we serve content, and so it's it's like it's it's a, a never-ending uh, task to, to, to add these new features, these new ways where we're serving content, and, and, and now the new way we're transporting content with HDB too, so... Um, it's it's good. It's fun, exciting times that we keep getting to uh, you know new use new newer features in the um, JVMs and uh, use newer protocols and, and support newer frameworks. So it's, it's good. Excellent. So you have a couple of sessions at Java One. Uh, uh, could you tell us a bit about uh, each of those sessions and uh, what you hope to deliver there and what you're hoping to get out of it? Uh, firstly, the uh, one of the little sessions, or uh, a small part I might have, is speaking with uh, Ludo Champenoise from Google about a collaboration we've done with Google uh, to um, make uh, Jetty much faster in uh, Google App Engine in the way it uh, starts up. Google App Engine has used uh, Jetty for its uh, Java component for some time, and because in the cloud environment, having small footprint and fast startups is very important, we've done some work with uh, Google to so we can fire up a whole container and configure a, a web app in uh, sub-second times so they can be fired up on demand as needed. Um, and so hopefully I'll be speaking with Ludo and um, uh, Google hopefully he's had some other announcements in, in that area and I won't steal their thunder on that one. Um, uh, my own talk is, is about a, a, a new feature that was in the server 3.1 spec which is the asynchronous I.O. It's called um, Into the Wild with uh, Asynchronous Servlet I.O. And the intention of that title is, is basically that I think server, I think I.O. is one of those really hard things. And you, you can see the little demonstrations of it. You can read the APIs and you go, oh, yeah, intuitively I understand how this works. But to actually write real code that actually works and is beneficial <laughs> uh, and doesn't make things worse is actually always a lot harder with async than you'd realize. So um, the talk is basically going to look at, at how we've used, um, well, it's going to look at the servlet async IO um, API, which is actually a different paradigm for async IO than most people would have seen before. It's different to NIO and NIO2. Um, and show how we've used it in our own uh, production uh, usages of, uh, say, fast CGI to um, uh, backends and proxy servlets and in, in, in the areas where it's a, it's a very valuable addition to the scaling of serving content. Excellent. So I wanted to ask you specifically a bit about your take on HTTP 2.0 generally uh, and uh, sort of, if you will, an elevator pitch of what HTTP 2.0 brings to the table for developers uh, and also your take on the servlet for API, if you will. Okay, there's, I'm a bit conflicted with HTTP 2. There's um, some good things in it and some bad things in it. Um, the good things about it is, is mostly what was good about Speedy. Um, it's a, a multiplex protocol, so instead of a client opening uh, many connections to a server, uh, the idea is you can open a single connection and multiplex multiple requests over that. And um, 
for a server implementer, this is really cool because I still haven't forgiven the browser vendors for when they broke the two connection rule and started going to six connections, eight connections to try and get um, more TCP capacity, more than their fair share, which put an enormous burden onto the servers. So if you, know, if you think that a successful web server is going to be dealing with you know, thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of, of users, if you multiply that by six connections, you're starting to look at a lot of connections. So anything we can do on the server side to, to reduce the connections um, saves us a lot of server side resources. And then having, a, um, there was a, a, a attempt with that in HTTP 1.1 with pipelining, but you need the ability for requests to over, overtake each other. And so the multiplexing side of, of the protocol is, is, is very interesting, and it should uh, promise good resource savings um, on the server side and um, improve out the way we serve our content. Um, it's, it's then a binary protocol rather than a parsed protocol, which is you know, um, uh, a, a good optimization, but it's, it's not revolutionary. Then I guess the next thing that really helps um, it, it uh, make a difference for users is the push capability, where the server can anticipate that once we've seen the index.html request, it's going to ask for logo.png. It's going to ask for style.css. It's going to ask for the JavaScript. So rather than waiting for a round trip for the, the, the HTML to go to the client, the client to parse it, and then to ask all these resources, and then the style sheet might have some images, so there's an, another round trip there. The server can anticipate all that and push those resources proactively to the browser. And the, the end, at the end of the day, HTTP2 is all about trying to get the speed of rendering your pages much, much quicker, you know, avoiding uh, multiple round trips, and you can have you know, orders of magnitude um, improvements in that rendering of the page. And speed is very important for a user's experience on the web. There's lots of studies that show that you know, a 15, 10% increase in speed can really help you retain your users um, and retain their interest and, and get them more interested in your content. So that's, that's where the focus of HTTP2 is. Where I'm not so happy with the protocol um, is that it, I see it as a missed opportunity. Um, it's, it, was, it was charted to look at the HTTP semantic and really captured just the HTTP semantic. But the web has gone beyond HTTP. We've got web sockets already, and there are uh, plenty of other semantics being you know, looked at that you know, might be useful over the web. By making HTTP2 directly um, relevant only to HTTP, what, the, the, the protocol is a little bit more complex than it needs to be, be done. They've conflated the framing layer with the semantic layer, hoping to try and get some extra little bits of optimization. But what this means is that in the future, it's going to be hard to get other semantics that aren't HTTP to be carried over that framing layer. And so the obvious candidate that, for that is WebSocket, where you, you've got other things besides you know, associated resources that you might want to push to the client. And so while it's probably likely that we'll see an extension to HTTP2 to carry WebSocket over the framing layer. It's going to have to, you know, be a little bit of protocol abuse. Basically, the way it's set up is anything that's going to be carried over this framing layer is going to have to pretend to look like HTTP, even though it's a different semantic. And that was kind of the, the problem we got with HTTP1, where we were using long polling and, you know, weird things in the WebSocket protocol to try and make it, you know, make proxies and other intermediaries meteries think that it's HTTP, but it's not. So it's kind of a missed opportunity to, to go to a multi-protocol universe where we could have had a web framing layer and then multiple semantics um, communicated over that. Um, so that's, and, and the protocol's are more complex than it needs to be for what it does, trying to get some of the efficiencies in there. So it, there's some good stuff and then some bad stuff. Um, it's at last call now, so I, I, it's probably a little bit too late to get rid of the bad stuff. Um, but the good stuff is certainly worthwhile getting excited about and and looking at you know getting away from a you know twenty year old um, uh, 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 protocol that we're using to, to ship our content about. Um, and so in the the servlet spec, we're we're looking at um, how we can put some of these features in in there. And what the key feature that we need to get supported in Servlet 4 is probably push. Because the, if a server is to push content to the client, it's got to know what is the associated resources. So it's got to know um, uh, 
that, that this logo is associated with that page and this JavaScript is associated with that, you know, these other pages. It's also got to know that this client's already seen it once and it doesn't need to see it again and you know, have some sort of intelligence about what's in the client cache. So the server can do that a little bit on its own. It can you know, look at the headers going backwards and forwards and guess with the referrer header that this resource is associated with that resource. But it doesn't really know whether it's just the user clicking quickly or whether it's um, really is associated. So to, 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 to make the server do a good job of pushing just the relevant content, you really need to bring the frameworks in, into um, play so that a framework, as it builds the page, can say that, oh, I know that this JavaScript's associated. I know these images are associated. I'll, I'll push them if that, if that user's session hasn't seen them already. If that user's session has seen them already, I won't push them. And, and so those are the, the sort of intelligences that we need to involve the, the application and or the application framework. So we're looking at how we can open up the server API so that that um, is available. It's got to be done in such a way that it, it, it's not too invasive, though, because we, we don't want to write um, applications that only run if the client happens to be running HTTP2. Um, there's going to be a lot of fallback to HTTP1 for decades to come. Um, so it's, uh, it's important that it's, it's, it's done in the right way so that the uh, users can um, uh, use it, push if it's available, but not be a penalty if it's not. And then it's also got to fold into all the other ways we have of serving content. There's no good um, pushing um, content if it's a blocking API and it's just going to, you know, uh, you know, uh, get rid of all the gains we've had in the last few iterations of making the server container a lot more asynchronous. So it's got to be an API so that when we want to push content, we can do so asynchronously. Uh, more so because the browser actually has the ability to, with HTTP2, to, to prioritize. It, it can be seeing three or four resources coming at it, and it can say, oh, well, you know, resource two is the one that I need most importantly to render the page. So it can actually throttle the other two resources and favorably take one resource. And that only works if the, the server is, is able to allow re requests to overtake each other. And so uh, that's the challenge to get that right um, in the um, server uh, for API. Excellent. Well, we look forward to uh, certainly your contributions, and you've already uh, done many contributions to the servlet spec, and we hope uh, it will continue, and we'll see uh, an excellent API for HTTP 2.2 and servlet 4. Uh, so, Greg, uh, I guess uh, we're going to wrap up here. Uh, so, I guess, okay. uh, is there anything else uh, you would like to say to the community before uh, Java 1? Uh, well, the other thing I'll say is we're having a boff on Jetty as well, so um, uh, if you're at Java 1, drop by for the boff. Um, it will just be pretty free-from discussion of, of, of where we're going with it um, and, and uh, uh, what's, what's happening. I, I think we're, we said it was going to be Jetty's 20th birthday this year, but we, turned out, we worked out it's only 19 years old. So uh, we'll have a 19th birthday party for Jetty at Java 1 and, and plan what we'll do for the 20th birthday party next year. <laughs> All right. Excellent. Thank you very much. Uh, we really appreciate it. Cheers.